Hello, welcome to Fire Engineering Training Minutes. I'm Jason DeFossi from Ontario, Canada, and my partner, Dale Zartman from Columbus, Ohio. Today, we're talking about pillars. We're talking about the designs. We're looking for hazards and things that could compromise our rescue plan. Uh, Dalen's gonna talk in more detail about the structural integrity of these posts, and I'll be talking about more of the technique for removal. Dalen? Yeah, so let's discuss the key hazards that we need to be aware of, as well as the reactions, responses, and design features of these things. First and foremost, always make sure that we expose the interior plastics and identify where our supplemental restraint systems are at. That's gonna include side curtain airbags on almost all of these vehicles, as well as the, the presence of seatbelt pretensioners and high pressure gas inflators for the airbag systems. Under no circumstances can we ever cut those high pressure gas inflators with hydraulic cutters. That's gonna apply pressure to those cylinders and it's gonna cause them to blevy, rupture, and basically explode. If they're not trapped within the rail, that shrapnel material can travel at a really high rate of speed and cause potential fatality to us as first responders. So use your reference sheets to identify the locations on those high pressure gas inflators. Also be cognizant of avoiding the location of the pretensioners. On the vast majority of these new EVs, those gas inflators are located somewhere up here in this roof line. They're embedded within this rail and they can either be in the A post, the portion of the C post, or somewhere midline between the B and C post. So identify those. The pretensioners are almost always located in the bottom portion of the B pillar. Jason's going to talk about those techniques. But what first responders need to understand is that hydraulic tools are getting faster and more powerful. The kinetic energy and the resistance in these ultra high strength pillars are getting stronger and stronger as we speed up tools and make tools more powerful and make the resistance radically higher. The violence uh, of the reaction of the tool when we create that cut or that fracture can be very dangerous for first responders. So the first point of caution is change your technique. Make sure that when you're handling your hydraulic cutters or spreaders and you're interacting with these materials, you have a very firm grasp of the tool. You've extended your arms to use good body mechanics so that when the tool jolts and responds to that fracture, you're able to absorb that movement with your shoulders and at no point in time is the body of the tool anywhere close to your person so that you incur injury. The second really important thing to think about when we're talking about these pillars and posts is avoiding angle movements. For many years, we've created many common techniques where we use spreaders or rams at different angles approaching and contacting the weld seams of the side body of the vehicle. And then we'll use pressure and power to force these pillars and posts away from the vehicles. On these modern EVs, these weld seams are so hard and brittle that our tools can't marry well, meaning they can't etch in and create a safe contact point. So we strongly encourage first responders to avoid any of those angle movements because your tools can jump out of those zones with great violence and speed, causing injury or, or damage to your person or to your equipment, and these pillars can snap back or respond as well with lots of violence. So Jason's gonna cover techniques that help us keep all of these considerations in mind and make safer uh, tactical approaches. That's right, Dalen. So from there, we're gonna talk about B pillar removal. Where do we start? Where do we finish? Plus a new concept, and that's called capturing our cuts. We're gonna demonstrate that next in our B pillar removal. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna demonstrate best practices for managing a B post. In this case, we have a patient here. We want to remove this post safely with control. We're going to require a cutter, a spreader, and a strap, as well as some hard protection for the patient. The team's going to come in. They're going to demonstrate that now. Also, what's important is where we cut. As always, we avoid those seatbelt pretensioners and things that can damage our rescue tools. So as the rescuer moves forward, he's peeling and peeking, identifying, looking for any hazards. At the base of most B pillars, we'll find our seatbelt pretensioners. Rescuer is also scribing for the cut to assist with the cutter man. Rescuer number two is coming in with hard protection, creating barriers between the patient and the cutter. Cutter man's got a large opening, is going to execute a full cut with one shot.
You'll notice that new cars no longer cut, they fracture and break and there's a reaction. Next, a spreaderman is coming in. He's compressing this post to capture the post. So when, and giving it a redirect out and away from the patient. Cutter man is coming up high on the cut. Hard protection is in place. We'll see a little bit of cutter migration. Spreader man is prepared to bear the weight of the spreader and the B post. Now the B post is clear. Sharp protection is coming in. Everything's getting wrapped to protect both the rescuer and the patient. You'll notice rescuer three is coming in to assist with that high protecting his hand over so his rescue doesn't hit his head. That's good, and high cut. So in summary, we've demonstrated how to properly remove and control our B post for better patient access. You'll notice that we captured our cuts by using our spreaders as well as tethering. We managed all our sharps and executed best practices. Remember the cautionary statements we provided about angle pushes with spreaders and rams, making singular cuts on B posts and then trying to get rams and spreaders to embed on ultra high strength steel and shift B pillars out is a very high hazard move. We urge you not to make that move, but to follow the best recommended practices of clean cuts and managed removals of the B posts. So thanks for watching Fire Engineering Training Minutes.